On March 13th, a state of national emergency was declared in the United States in the wake of COVID-19. And the state of Texas wasted no time picking itself up by the bootstraps to work on what matters most, controlling women's uteruses. Exactly one week later, on March 21st, sitting Texas governor, Greg Abbott issued an executive order temporarily halting non-essential medical procedures. As his office clarified, this explicitly meant abortions, but probably also included ass implants. Bury me in lip kits and eyeshadows. Okay. Though I couldn't imagine a scenario where a patient's life would be at risk unless they had dumps like a truck, 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 size like what, what, what. What resulted was an influx of desperate women now forced to travel out of state during a nationwide quarantine in order to access safe abortion, putting not only themselves at greater risk of exposure to the virus, but of transmitting it. Now, Texas is huge. I'm not sure if you've ever tried to leave the state, but it takes forever. You gotta really not want to have that baby if you're willing to make that drive, which ironically enough is the kind of commitment to a child that would make a great mother. The real irony, however, was that the very mandate issued to protect at-risk mothers and slow the spread of COVID-19 was now the same one putting their lives and others in danger. Outside of a standard run-of-the-mill bukkake, that might be the single greatest example of circular logic in recent memory. Now, Abbott might have declared abortions as non-essential, but what his office deemed essential might not surprise you. Churches. That's right. You know that glorified book club where people sit really close together and contemplate what Jesus would do? I'll tell you what he would do. He would stay the fuck home. As a Houstonian, I can't help but think back to 2017 when Hurricane Harvey destroyed our beautiful, fat, diverse, sex trafficking city. It was nothing short of extraordinary as people and businesses from all walks of life united to provide immediate relief. And while Houston Furniture King and cultural icon Mattress Mac you money. opened up his store to shelter flood victims, professional human being impersonator and Kanye enabler Joel Osteen closed his 17,000 capacity Lakewood megachurch. And now three years later, in the midst of a global pandemic, when all businesses and gatherings are being shut down, our governor is allowing churches to remain open. Governor Abbott refuses to abandon what seems to be nothing short of an addiction to poor decision-making. Who does he think he is? Me? At a 2017 Rally for Life march in Austin, Abbott stood in front of a gathering of cage-free, 100% organic, farm-to-table, pro-life advocates and declared, quote, I will always fight for your life as governor. Which brings us to where we are now. Upon reaching 1 million reported cases of COVID in America, Governor Abbott is using this bizarre, tragic milestone to announce the limited reopening of Texas businesses on Friday. That means retail stores, restaurants, malls, and you guessed it, movie theaters. Thanks for helping us keep the theater clean. You know, all the essentials. So maybe you couldn't get an abortion, but look at the silver lining. At least now you can bring your newborn to the movies, a thing everyone loves. And after that nightmare is over, you can swing by the mall, fill up on free bourbon chicken samples at the food court, and then drop that baby in the back dumpster on your way out. Remember, think globally, act locally. So why this move to open so soon? You might recall that earlier this month, the price of oil actually dropped to negative $37 per barrel. And no, apparently that didn't mean you could go to the gas station and demand that the clerk pay you to fill up your tank. But it does mean that Texas and its $1.8 trillion economy, second only to California, has been hit harder than the frontal lobe on an NFL superstar, or even his wife. Abbott's reasoning to let the quarantine order expire was because it had, quote, done its job to slow the growth of COVID-19. But that's not entirely true. According to U.S. Congresswoman Veronica Escobar, quote, Texas is near the bottom or at the very bottom when it comes to testing per capita. So the numbers are probably far greater than what is being reported, with Texas ranking 48th in nationwide COVID testing. Saying the spread of the virus has slowed down because citizens aren't being sufficiently tested is like saying that unemployment has gone down because everyone is dead. Sure, it sounds good, but it's wrong. 
Yes, we're all tired of being stuck at home. You're just about finished with Netflix and masturbation has become the equivalent of having the office on in the background. It's just sort of always there. You're starting to sympathize with the killer who murders their partner in that true crime podcast you're restarting. What I mean is yes, we need to get back to work, but just because we're ready, does it mean it's the right time? Epidemiologist Dr. Michael T. Osterholm is the Director for Infectious Disease Research and Policy at the University of Minnesota and author of Deadliest Enemy, Our War Against Killer Germs. Osterholm has repeatedly warned of opening our economy too early, stating that there is, quote, lots of transmission left to come and that this virus will infect millions and millions of people in the months ahead. As he explains, not more than 5% of the population is currently infected, and that this number will continue to grow to 60 to 70% before herd immunity is reached. So what should we do in the meantime? Jack off. No. Okay, one more time, but then test. Test, test, test. Osterholm, amongst many leading researchers, continues to advocate for a comprehensive nationwide testing initiative as currently the FDA seems to be completely absent, similar to the tact in all those quote unquote Facebook jokes about Kobe. On average, 15 to 20% of COVID tests are yielding false negatives, which means you have a one in five chance of being that guy in the zombie movie who has to pretend he's not frothing at the mouth. So if we're gonna reopen Texas, let's start by implementing the same ruthless vigor for testing that accompanied the No Child Left Behind Act. And someone please reiterate to Governor Abbott that No Child Left Behind is not the state's policy on abortion. For now, I think it's fair to say that the governor should worry less about who's late and focus more on the consequences of opening too early. Yes, our economy is the backbone of society, but what good is a free market if people continue to pay with their lives? So if you want to reopen, you do that. But don't expect me to participate. I'll be at home curled up in bed, drinking bleach like a fucking adult. (sighs) 